Lauren Lake destroy stupid moms on paternity court. Everybody makes a mistake in life. It's where you go from here. When I said you weren't surprised, Ms. Coleman, it's because I could tell you were you really wanted to hurt him. You did. Because he hurt me for four years. Four years straight just hurt me. I can see that. Hold on to your GPS, folks, because in sunny Los Angeles, we've got a Miss Williams who's been touring homes, chauffeured by none other than her boyfriend's sister, who now rolled into court, convinced beyond a doubt that her dearly departed brother isn't the baby daddy. They're just giving me problems, I'm having issues, and I just don't understand. Clearly, I don't She's understand. She's a whore. And when this test proves that the baby is not my brother's baby, we want her to remove his name from the birth certificate. Why would you put his name on the birth certificate when he was dead and nobody knew that was his baby? He knew it was his baby. He didn't know. Okay. All right, hold your mobile screens. The defendant had taken the stand, demanding the baby mama erase her late brother's name from the birth certificate. But hey, wait! If Miss Williams was dating her brother, why would Miss Carr take her to the private parties? Hmm. So you would take her where she wanted to go, or you plan the party? I would take her where she wanted to go, and pick her up, and I would meet some of the guys sometime. So you so, know yes. for certain that she I was sleeping around because you were there. I sleeping with other people, yes. Were you having parties with men? Were you Can I sleeping you, with Honor? different men? Yes, Your Honor. All right, folks. Miss Carr just dropped a bombshell. She's whipped out what appears to be a city map. And guess what? It was a guide to Miss Williams' romantic marathon across town. Buckle up, because this courtroom just turned into a twisted game of Where's Waldo? I started out taking her to come to this person's house, where I would drop her off and come back an hour and a half later and pick her up. And she would bring the person outside. Well, she brought this person outside to say hello to me, crack a couple of jokes, a little sweaty, messed up. I'm taking her to Manchester and McKinley, dropping her off and picking her up. Miss Williams insists that her cousin spill the pregnancy beans to the late Mr. Brown. But Miss Potts, with all the confidence in the world, asserts it was a letter that delivered the shocking news to her brother. Who's telling the truth? Well, see for yourself. This first letter is dated November 5th. It's a letter from you to Mr. Brown. Mr. R okay. And it says, I talked to my cousin about two days ago and she told me she talked to you and let you know what's up. And you said, I'm crazy. Yeah, I guess I am. I was in the working dorm and I had to keep it a secret because if the people would have knew I was pregnant, they're going to move me out to general population. Get ready for some family drama, folks. Miss Carr clarified that her brother wasn't exactly on his best behavior while Miss Williams was in jail. He had plenty of visitors, and he wasn't always truthful with her to keep her calm. But there's a surprise twist coming up that you won't want to miss. Yeah, I you have, also slept with two of my condoms. other brothers. So how are Daddy, you so sure that that's my brother's baby? How are you so sure? Because I know. Oh. Are you sure of all your We're baby daddies? Oh, okay then, but, but you need to be worrying come. about your own business instead we can of mine. Come. I know what I do with mine. Just like I know what I do with mine. Throw it a party. She's a whore. According to Mr. Brown's mother, tragedy struck when her son was shot dead outside his own home. And this happened before the baby even entered the world. To add to the chaos, the baby mama was dealing with her own hospital stint at the same time. Sent the baby home to one of her friends. Because, because they wouldn't even come and pick the no, baby up. No, because she never, you never Your Honor, I was sick. I, was I had a conversation Your Honor, I was with sick. Mr. Brown. I was sick for two years. But she never asked me to take the baby. I had a conversation with Mr. Brown. She never asked me to Brown. step up and take the baby. I asked him, who gonna come and pick the baby up? Because I don't have nobody. I don't really have family members. It was time for the moment of truth in this trust-shattering paternity saga. With testimonies flying left and right, there's only one thing left to rely on those all-important DNA results. The stage was set, and Judge Lake was about to unveil the verdict. It has been determined by this court that the deceased, Mr. Mark K. Brown, was her father. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. I'm sorry. Pushing a full-blown dad away? That was a new one in this court, but Miss Coleman was certain that the plaintiff wasn't her baby daddy. So, was Mr. Williams ready to step down? Not at all, me mates. He wasn't up for this ride all over again. 
The man was ready to fight for the full custody of the little ones. And it seems like this is, it keeps happening on and on and on. Like, everybody I get with, they see how close I am to the kids, and the way to hurt me if I leave them alone is to take my kids away from me. This time, though, I signed my birth certificates, if you don't mind. You signed them? I signed the birth certificate. You are the legal father. Yes, ma'am. I named them and everything. Well, isn't this a juicy tidbit of drama? According to the defendant, Miss Coleman apparently had a little rendezvous around the time of conception. Quite the audacious move, wouldn't you say? And now, she's playing the good dad, bad boyfriend. The baby mama even admitted that she let the spectacle plaintiff sign the birth certificate for strategic reasons, not because she really wanted him to. You claim you were intimate with the other guy. Yes. The other on guy. On this date. On December 24th. Yes. He left me for Christmas. This would it, this would have been our first Christmas together. And with me, I got when I get emotional and when I get stressed out, I use sex as a coping mechanism, so to speak. Oh. It seems we've got quite the parenting expert on our hands. The plaintiff had graciously enlightened the judge about the defendant's questionable childcare skills, which apparently included leaving the kids solo to satisfy her own hunger pangs. What a wreck she is! Like two hours later, she come in, she's screaming, you trying to take my kids, you trying to take my kids. I ain't leaving by themselves, somebody else is supposed to be watching them. But she left them upstairs by themselves to go cook her something to eat. I'm like, what? I asked my neighbor to watch my children. When I left out, I'm, my children were sleeping, their diapers were clean, everything was taken care of. <sighs> it's like we're diving into a mystery novel, isn't it? The plaintiff's concerns about the baby mama's actions certainly raise an eyebrow or two. Now, as for her testimony, let's leave the detective work to our trusty Judge Lake, shall we? Man, I have had this man in my life since I was 18 years old, and he has caused me nothing but hell in my life. I've not been happy since I've been with him, since I met this man. I've not been happy. True enough, he took care of me, he did what he had to do for me, but I am not, I've never been happy with him. But you have- I want him out of my life. If I try to uplift myself, he stumps me back down to the ground. Ah, the baby mama has made her stance quite clear, hasn't she? No room in her life for anyone else. And that other man? Well, he's just a fleeting one-night stand. But hold, paternity peeps, because our plaintiff has a surprise allegation up his sleeve that's about to shake the defendant's world. I'm going to walk out now, okay? Because I want to hit him. Be honest with you, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, because this man is trying to kill this this stupid man. Calm down. How dare you? How dare you? Miss Coleman, I need you to come here and I need you to tell me. I need you to tell me. Don't even look at him. How dare him? Well, it seems like Judge Lake had to wear the educator's hat amidst all this drama and commotion. The mother's decisions were certainly a cause for concern. And now, it's time for her to brace herself for the consequences. Oh boy. Ultimately, what's at stake is the fact that this man seems to be very invested in these children. And baby, I gotta call it the way I see it. You made a choice to allow this man to sign the birth certificate. As you said, I knew he'd for the be a bit of my kid. For the benefit of your children, because I knew he'd be there. It seems we've reached the moment of truth. With a treasure trove of testimonies recorded, it's time for the paternity police to unveil the highly anticipated DNA results. The suspense was building, and we were about to discover whose claims hold water in this case. Mr. Williams, you are the father of both twins. You don't seem surprised, Miss Coleman. I'm mad. I can tell. I know you're happy, Mr. Williams. Yes, I am. The results are in, truth is out. Meet Miss Points, who brought her ex-boyfriend to court with a jaw-dropping claim that he's the father of her 29-year-old daughter, despite denying the fact years ago. What a drag! If only she had controlled her emotions at that time. Your Honor, because I'm here to uh, regain a relationship with my daughter. I don't hear from her. She don't call. I don't see her. I haven't seen her over a couple months now. It's heartbreaking. And you admit you caused this drama by telling the defendant out of your own mouth that he was not the biological father. Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Roman is quite the detective in this paternity puzzle. He was dead set on denying fatherhood, all because of the baby's curly hair at birth. And not to forget, he conducted a little hair investigation comparing his other offspring from different baby mamas. 
like the player indeed. We was in high school together. We started going together and we had like a little ritual. You know, every day I get out of school, I would go home and my mom, she'd be at work and here come Miss Points every day. She'd come over and Marcellus knock on the door and I look out the window and see, mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Rowan was front and center at the baby's grand entrance into the world. He even gave the little one a nod of acceptance. However, he conveniently forgot to ink the birth certificate. Big Mama, on the other hand, swears he did. What on earth could make Big James go from dad of the year to paternity denier? Two years into it, she told me that somebody else was the father and I wasn't even trying to hurt her. And I'm like, I done been daddy two years. Then I'm like, she's going on my income taxes. I know that. That wasn't no problem, you did. Right. Don't try to tell me now, this is not my child, this is my child. Yes. Our big mama admitted she let her words fly in the heat of the moment years ago not reeling the long-lasting impact on her daughter. Talk about letting the cat out of the bag. What a revelation! Anyways, let's hear from the daughter in question. So I was confused, angry, mad at my mom because my brother and my sister have a father and I have other kids too. And I want my kids to have a granddaddy. So I was angry and stuff at my mama. So then once that bell was rung in your mind, did you confront your mother? Did you begin to ask questions? Yes, Your Honor. Well, 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 Miss Points. It seems like anger management might be your next hot ticket. Let's not turn marriage into a full-blown wrestling ring, shall we? And oh, there's another guy in the picture. But what exactly was their dynamic? Hmm. And so clearly you were intimate with this man as well. Yes, Your Honor, but I was more intimate with, with Mr. Marcellus than the other guy. Right, but we know that it yeah. just takes one. I know, I know, you're right. Did you ever tell this man I'm pregnant, tell him that he could potentially be Sherelle's biological yes, I, father? Yeah, I, I told him to, yes I. Judge Lake, the courtroom boss in her own right, decided to put on her detective hat. When Miss Points claimed there was no birth certificate as evidence, the judge had a little surprise up her robe. She pulled one out of thin air. And wait, there was another man's name listed. So when Mr. Rowan left, the other man came up yes, to the hospital yes, and then signed the birth certificate. Yes, Your Honor. Why did he sign the birth certificate? He believed he was the father? Yes, he did. And Mr. Rowan's been taking care of Sherelle. Yeah. Yes, Your Honor. Come on, let the truth yes, come out yes, now. We're here, we here now, we here. Grab your heartstrings, because this family's wild ride has been a wild, emotional ride. But fear not, for the truth always finds its way out of the chaos and into the spotlight. And guess what's finally stepping into that spotlight? The DNA results we've all been on the edge of our seats for. Mr. Rowan, you are not the hey, father. Hey, no. He been in my well, that's on paper. Like I say, ain't nothing gonna change. Come here, baby. Come here. Come over here. Can she come be step yes, with her daddy? You wanna come stand on. with your daddy? Okay. Mr. Powell was in the paternity court, who, after a whopping three months of wedded joy, suspects his dear wife, Miss Burns, might have strayed. But wait, there's more! She didn't just wander off, she packed her bags and moved in with another man! Now, we're left with the timeless paternity maze. Our marriage was good at first, mine and Kevin's. And well, it's then... just 90 days! <laughs> yes. Mr. Powell's had a job and then he'd lose his job. Then he had a job and then he'd lose his job. I figured everything was put off on me. I have three other children other than the baby I provide for. The audacity of this woman! Can you believe it? She confessed about her little rendezvous to her husband. Bluntly. However, Miss Burns already had a child with Mr. Jones, the other man. That was already in question. What a mess! Here, just listen to this confusion yourself. He and was one of the candidates that had to take the test? Yes, Your Honor. The, the, the lady that did the testing mm -hmm. actually said that I was the third person to have this DNA test done on the child. So was he the second or the third, Miss Burns? Wow. He was the second, that was named. Oh, the drama unfolds. Just as Mr. Powell realized his marital mishaps, he reached out to Miss Burns, begging her to return. But here's the twist. She dropped a bombshell, admitting she's already indulged in unprotected <coughs> with Mr. Jones. So when you were pregnant, did you tell both men you were pregnant? Yes, Your Honor. I told Mr. Jones and 
he reacted differently than I expected. Uh, he I was, was, I was mad. pissed off, Your Honor. I wasn't very happy. I have three other kids, and then we got a DNA test with our six-year-old. What did Mr. Powell say when you told him? He didn't really say anything. The anticipation. Mr. Powell, aware of his wife's rendezvous with Mr. Jones, was on an emotional roller coaster when he got wind of the paternity. But wait for it. In another shocking revelation, both the plaintiff and defendant were even physical to this day. And here's the proof. You had sex with Ashley Burns in the last 30 days. You answered no, which meant you had had sex and you weren't lying. Yes, we did. The lie detector determined you were telling the truth. Now what? What do you have to say now? Miss Burns seemed to have a knack for keeping things interesting. Not only did she have an affair with Mr. Jones, but surprise, surprise, she also dabbled in infidelity within that relationship. Now, it appears Mr. Jones might just end up on the plaintiff's team. The delivery room after she had the baby, once she finally allowed me to come in, and I took a video of him. I watch this video every day because I love this child to death. I think that he's mine and I want him to be mine. And I've got this video here today. I buy things for the baby all the time because I didn't know if this was my child or not. In a funny yet confusing way, Miss Burns had a problem. Two men, Mr. Jones and Mr. Powell, both want to be called daddy by her kids. Taking note of the situation, Judge Lake had to do some schooling for the baby mama. Here's how that went. Who do you want to be with? You've got half the children calling him daddy, the other half calling him daddy. He loves you. He looked like he about through with you. I don't know what you want to do. I want to be with Mr. Jones, but if he chooses otherwise, then so be it, and I'll go on without everybody. I mean, I don't need either one of them. I choose to be. This paternity triangle was about to reach the conclusion, as the DNA results were now in. The emotions were running high, and the anticipations had left everyone numb. So get your volumes up high and sit tight, because the paternity police are here to give the final verdict. Mr. Jones, you are his father. I'm still gonna love the kid no matter what. I mean, I'm gonna be there, but I just, all the information that I just heard today, I just wish it kind of wasn't.